I've recently been struggling with SwiftUI performance. While I was updating a label while scrolling the scroll view, it turned out that SwiftUI was re-rendering not only the label, but also the entire scroll view. I wasn't expecting this and it took me a while to understand what was going on and find a solution for this. Okay, so I have a very simple demo up here. It is just a scroll view and when you will start scrolling, you will see that there is a position that is being logged right now inside this terminal. So what I want to do right now is to add a position as a text label here, but I don't want to have this inside this scroll view because I had a similar issue inside my app and I had a scroll view which was the actually the UI scroll view, which is the part of the UI kit. So I needed to move the position out of this uh, timeline. So let's say that we would like to add it here on top of this uh, timeline. And the timeline, uh, it is like very simple. We have the scroll view, the Swift UI scroll view. It is unfortunately wrapped with uh, the scroll view reader because if you don't know, scroll view at least right now does not allow you to get the position of the view. So we need to use this uh, a little hack with the preference. You probably have seen this before if you ever try to get the position. So this one is changing the preference key with this value of the of the scroll view of the current value. And then uh, on preference change. So we are listening to this change. And if this will change, I'm just like printing this to the, to the terminal. So very simple. And right now I would like to get this uh, value from the timeline view and put this to the main view, which is this one, the content view. So the main challenge here is to add this additional text. And when the scroll will happen and the text will change, it will not affect the actual scroll view because as I will show you, this one is uh, because we will use this view model it will also propagate all of the changes down to the scroll view, so the scroll view will also be changing. We can actually we can actually add the text label here inside this timeline view, so I can just like show you how actually this uh, works right now and what is the issue. Let's add the state variable here. It can be the CG float. Let's initialize this with zero. And when the position change, when this preference key change, we can just update the position. Let's add the position here. So we have the position and as you can see, we have a border here around our scroll view and the border is type uh, of the debug. I added this in one of my previous video when I show you how exactly the SwiftUI is like re-rendering the views. And this one is basically just randomly generating a color. So right now, when we will try to scroll, the position is being updated and also the border is changing because each time SwiftUI will re-render the view, the border will have a different color. So this way we know that this view, the timeline view, is being re-rendered. So this one, the position, is basically a publisher and each time we are changing the position, SwiftUI will also use the object will change the internal publisher and this way it will notify the view that it needs to be re-rendered. So we are changing the position here and then using it inside this text. So we are each time scrolling this, we are actually changing the, or re-rendering the view. But yeah, let's move this up. We actually want to have this position value here inside this main view. And actually we could create a new view for this one. If you have seen my previous video, you may know that like if you will split your views into multiple views, and then if you are updating the state inside your view, it will not re-render the other views because those are like separate. So adding additional view 
may be beneficial. In this case, it will not exactly be, but I will show you this, how, how actually this works. Let's add new SwiftUI view. What we could do is to put this position value inside this content view model. Right now it is empty, but uh, let's add the publish value here. Make this CG float as previously and let's start with zero. So inside the timeline view, we will be using the view model because we already have it here. And instead of updating this position state, we can remove this. We will actually be using the view model position and putting the value inside this view model. Now inside the position view, we can add this environment object, which is, which is the content view model and use the content view model to present this position. So right now we just need to pass the environment object and also, of course, use this position view here. We could just do this because it will be propagated. So as you can see, the position, the new one, this one, when we are scrolling, this position is being updated. But this timeline view is still being unnecessary redrawn each time we are scrolling. So this is not good. Let's also add uh, for this position view. Let's also add border with the debug. So we can see that the position is also being changed. And the reason is, of course, because we are having this inside the content view. We have this published property, which is a publisher. So each time we are changing the position, SwiftUI will emit and it will re-render the views, which is uh, actually something really good. And uh, most times in most of the cases, uh, that's like the behavior that we would like to have. But in this case, I don't actually want to uh, for the SwiftUI to redraw each time I will just scroll this um, scroll view because it is like, in this case, it is super simple and uh, you probably will not notice anything. But in my app, when I did this, uh, I noticed that performance was like really bad and I just needed to change this. So what we can do to fix this uh, is that we could not use the publish. We can use the combine and this one will help. So inside the combine, you can use this current value subject. We need to set the type so we can use the CG float here and never because it will never fail and initialize this with zero as before. Of course, we have the typo, so CG float. So this one, the current value subject is also a publisher. So SwiftUI, in SwiftUI, we can listen to, to the changes. But using it, it means that SwiftUI will not call the internal, the object will change the publisher. So we have a separate publisher here. So right now we need to update the timeline view. The position right now sends. We, we need to call the send on the position and send the value like this. Inside our position view, we need to remove this. And because this one is a publisher we need to listen on it so inside this 50y on receive we need the publisher so it is the view model and the position so each time this one will publish we will catch this on receive and we'll have this value let's print this for now value Inside the view model, we can, inside the timeline view, we can remove this position. Let's open the terminal. So yeah, as you can see, we have the value when we will scroll. That's fine. Now, in order to actually use this, we can add a state here. And as we know, the state, when the state will be updated, here inside this, uh, position view, it will not affect the other views because it's like being emitted here inside this view. So it will not trigger the scroll view to be updated.
let's use the position and don't forget to update the state the position state with this new value okay let's build this so as you can see when we will scroll the position is being updated and the squift ui each time will re-render this view but this one the scroll view is not being updated anymore it's not being re-rendered anymore so using combine here with current value subject it solves this issue so sometimes you need to propagate all of the changes in SwiftUI, but sometimes you just uh, need to like, suppress it and make those changes only for the portion of the views. I know that this may not be a use case for everyone, but when you will actually hit some of the performance issues, this may actually be helpful. In the next video, I will talk about another issue that I had, which was the opposite. SwiftUI did not re-render the view when the data changed. So don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.